please welcome David Meese. Put your hand, put your hand, put your hand. 
been sabotaging the cafeteria food. I said, but sir, they don't need any help. <laughs> and you can. Jesus in 
When I was a kid growing up, I used to be kind of mixed up about my mom, you know. I mean, she was so sweet and everything, except when I did something wrong, you know. And uh, you know what I'm talking about. I used to get really mixed up because I'd watch TV, you know, and mothers on television never acted like real mothers. You know what I'm talking about? You know, on, on TV, you know, when kids do things wrong, you ever notice? They never do anything to them, man. All they ever say is, young man, go to your room. <laughs> go to your room. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but my mother never said that to me when I did something wrong. When I did something that was really wrong, she'd look at me and say, I brought you into this world, I'll take you out. <laughs> We're talking violence on TV, they never met my mother, you know what I mean? <laughs> you ever notice too, when mothers get really mad, they don't talk normal either? They think me do you understand what I am trying to say to you or to listen to me? Ooh. Look at this room! Look at this room! Look at him, look at him, look at him. I got clothes all over the floor, but that way I don't get the carpet dirty, you know? Watch your step though, Mom. There's a cat down there. I know there's a cat under there somewhere. That's my brother Dwayne. Oh. Come on out, Dwayne. You've been down there three days, man. See, my brother wasn't much help either, you know. And he was three years older than I was, and he's the one that corrupted me. <laughs> and you see, my mother had a lot of rules around the house, you know, and you just didn't break those things, you know, unless you wanted to be turned back to dust or something. And uh, I'd be real careful, you know. Well, he and I had an agreement going where he wouldn't tell on me if I wouldn't tell on him, you know, when we did something wrong, you know. We figured we'd both live longer that way. <laughs> and see, one of those rules my mom had, had to do with the kind of music you listen to. See, my mother didn't want anything but classical music in the house. She didn't want any of that rock stuff or that beat. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to have that in my house. I'm not going to have any of that country western garbage either. For years I thought that was the name of the music, country western garbage, you know. A guy said he liked country western music. I said, oh, you like garbage. Oh. Got my jaw handed to me. <laughs> now, we, we didn't even have any religious records in the house or gospel music, you know, unless it was written by Bach, Brahms, or Beethoven. And I, uh, I couldn't really get into that, you know, it was all in German, you know. <laughs> It's not like somebody with sinus trouble to me. <laughs> but, uh, I was in there practicing the piano one time, and I saw my brother Dwayne coming in the house. You see, something about Dwayne you gotta realize. You see, my brother Dwayne never came in the side door in the house unless he was smuggling something in. He shouldn't, you know. Did you know that he had in his possession a Beatle record? I said, man, do you want to die? <laughs> he took me to the back room and he played me some of it. And I've got to kind of admit, you know, I kind of liked it too. Well, you, you see, we had a problem then. Because we could only play it when my mother was out of the house. Of course, you could always tell when my mother left the house because she had a bad muffler. And we're not just talking your average everyday bad muffler either, gang. You know, we're talking bad muffler, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, walls would shake, buildings would collapse, mothers would take children off the streets, you know, we're talking bad muffler, okay? So the way we'd work our music is very simple, you see? I'd be in there practicing my Mozart. And I'd hear my mother driving off, you know? Twenty years ago today, Sergeant Pepper caught the band my brother come in. My brother come in and he say, Is mama gone? I said I wouldn't be singing this if she was here, nerd. So he said, and we'd sing together, you know, till we'd hear her coming back, you know.
Should I say, what a nice young man. Look at my brother and say, why can't you be more like your little brother? And he'd always say, I am. <laughs> You see, I tell you that story to make a point. Uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of people that try to run their Christianity the way my brother and I tried to run our music, you know? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You know the people, they act one way when they're around one group of people. And then they get around another group of people and they become someone else. You know, they talk differently, they act differently. It's almost like, it's almost like we've got a world full of schizophrenic Christians running around loose all over the place, you know? Well, of course, there's only one big problem with all that. You see, God does not have a bad muffler. And, uh, you see, whether you're willing to admit it or not, you see, he's, he's with you every moment of every day, seeing the good things and the bad things, you know? While you may be fooling your friends for a while, your parents for a while, your teachers, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, maybe even fooling yourself, you're not fooling God. Because, you see, there is no such thing as a, as a part-time Christian. Huh? And you either are one or you aren't one. And there's nothing in the middle. And I didn't really understand that myself until I was halfway through school, halfway through college. Thought I'd been a Christian all my life, and I came face to face with the realization that Christianity involved a relationship. Something you do moment to moment, day to day, not something you do once a week and then forget about, you know? When I realized that it made all the difference in the world in my life. I'd like to sing for you a song that deals with the commitment I made a number of years ago to always strive to be with his every moment of every day. The song goes like this. I don't want to be yours for just this hour. I don't want this feeling to fall when daylight comes I don't want the night to hide the light of your smile Or daylight come and find it gone Cause I've had so many things that came and left me I've had my fill of this world's ups and downs I want to learn to trust in something more than just myself And I believe that you can show me how And I want you all the time to fill my
wrong Singing my songs for the rock of all hey, hey, hey.
He loved us so much He died He died He died for this thing of Jesus in the garden where he prayed and they led him through the streets in shame and they spat upon the Savior so pure and free from sin they said crucify him he's to blame and upon his precious head you know they placed a crown of thorns Laughed. They laughed and said, Behold your king. And then they struck him and they cursed him. And they mocked his holy name. And all alone he suffered everything. To the 
howling mob he yielded he did not for mercy cry and the cross of shame he bore all alone and when he cried it's finished and he gave himself to die and salvation's wondrous plan was somebody else, huh? Or they do, step and seize as Rose Garden or something. Seriously, I don't know what they do wrong. Obviously, they're guilty of something or the Romans wouldn't be killing them already. You don't know. Well, I guess they don't really need a reason anymore, you know? I see the three of them this time. Next thing, they'll be in groups, you know? Uh, they won't stop till we're all dead. in the middle. I've seen him somewhere before. I'm not sure. Wait, I remember now. I remember now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was on my way to Galilee, you know, and I, I came across this huge crowd of people. There were like hundreds of them next to the seaside, and him, the guy in the middle, looked like he was going to try to speak to them or something, but as he attempted to, I remember they were, they were crowding around him so close, like they were trying to touch him or something, that, that they were inadvertently pushing the poor fellow back into the water, you know? And I, and I thought to myself, hey, if this guy doesn't do something fast, he's going to be a very wet prophet, you know? And, well, he must have thought so, too, because he, uh, he got into this boat. That's right, he got into this boat, and, uh, and all the rest of the people there sat around on the edge of the sea and the rocks and ledges and, and listened as he spoke. You know, he, he spoke like no one had ever heard before. About love and, and caring and sharing with everything and everyone and, and with such authority, too. You know, I, I'd never heard anyone like that before. I was really impressed. I had to leave before he finished, and I, I never got his name. I wonder who he is. I guess it doesn't matter much now, does it? He'll be dead in a few minutes anyway. Well, it's kind of strange out here or something. I don't know what it is. You feel that? It's kind of cold all of a sudden, dark. Huh? I'm going to head back to town in a minute, okay? If you uh, find out who that is, I wish you'd let me know, you know? I, I don't know what it is about him, man. I, I believe that face, man, that is the saddest face I've ever seen in my life. Those eyes. Those eyes, there's something about them, you know? I, I, I tell you this much, I have walked up and down this hillside, man. I have walked up and down, back and forth, half the afternoon, and no matter where I was standing, I, I swear to you, no matter where I was standing, I swear that the guy was looking right at... I'm 
sure of him. The guy in the middle, he's looking at me. Who are you? there when they laid him in the tomb were you there when they laid my sweet Jesus in the tomb Show us the reason to 
believe me when I tell you that he is my reason.